Welcome back. Incorporating big data into farming is not without challenges, especially when the margins are rather thin. The idea of the e-farm system came from YMT Organic Farm CEO Zhang Huan, who started out in the computer industry. YMT Organic Farm was founded in 2008 when the public started to voice concerns over food safety nationwide. Melamine tainted infant formula, preserved duck eggs tainted with copper sulfate, pesticide laced ginger, recycled cooking oil, and cadmium coated rice often made the headlines. At that time, Zhang Huan was taking EMBA classes at Shanghai's Jiao Tong University, and it was when he met his two partners, Chiu Jianxing and Gao Chun Mao. All of the food safety scares started them thinking about organic farming. The melamine tainted infant formula scandal happened in 2008. And we saw that despite the improvement in living standards, people were worrying about basic food safety issues. I wanted to do something about it, something fundamental, so I thought of running a farm. YMT Organic Farm is not the only organic vegetable provider in Shanghai. Tony's farm was founded in 2005, one of the earliest and biggest in the city. It offers customers organic food boxes containing either 7 or 14 kinds of vegetables, depending on how big the family is. As opposed to YMT Organic Farm's offering of free choice among dozens of different kinds. But providing that free choice is expensive for the company. YMT Organic Farm has to be able to precisely predict customers' demands and strictly match their supplies to them. That would be unimaginable in traditionally managed agriculture. What is the biggest problem in agriculture? Farmers don't know what the market needs. And the consumers don't know what the farmers can grow or when they can grow it. It depends on the adjustments of the wholesale market. People say that agriculture is a big gamble between farmers and consumers. But I think both of them are losers. If products cannot be sold and costs cannot be covered, farmers will sacrifice the quality of products to lower costs and get more yields. Then consumers have to bear the problem of poor quality products. It is a lose-lose result. Traditional farm products are sold in wholesale markets, where supply and demand can be adjusted by price. You can't do that with organic food sold on the Internet. When YMD Organic Farm first tried out its e-farm software, the company found that it wound up wasting 80% of its production. The e-farm system works on data analysis, and it took a lot of time to get the right data, six years. In fact, to build a database containing the consumption habits of a million customers. The main cost of an e-farm system is really time because we need to constantly collect customers' preferences. Moreover, customer psychology is changing. It took us a really long time to collect different kinds of consumer psychology and consumption behavior. The precision of the e-farm software has increased a lot in these six years, but it still makes mistakes. We will need to improve the software by studying customer behavior for a very long time. Though it hasn't been easy, the hard work is paying off. YMT Organic Farm's wastage rate has fallen from 80% to 20%, and the company started to break even in 2012. Last year, its sales hit 100 million yuan. This has not been easy to make, however. That's because the prices of organic vegetables can exceed 60 yuan per kilogram, almost three times as much as conventional grown products. At the same time, YMT Organic Farm's profit margin only runs between 5% and 8%. Why? Organic vegetables are very different from traditional vegetables. Normal pesticides are not allowed, neither is herbicide, so the cost is much higher. Moreover, our products are delivered to customers' doors. Logistics and services need to be included. A greenhouse costing 60,000 yuan can only be used for five years. Land rent is 2,000 yuan per acre every year. Labor costs are 6 yuan per kilogram. Add in packing, logistics, marketing, and customer services, and even the high prices do not bring high profits. 
Another reason for the relatively low profit margin is that YMT Organ Farm reinvests a large share of its income into increased production. Organic agriculture needs more investment. We still invest more than 10 million yuan every year for equipment upgrading. This year, we invested 16 million to build new farm and production lines, but they won't yield profits immediately. It takes a long time, so we've kept our profit margin quite low now. I really like the concept of YMT, but what are the challenges of starting or even growing a business like this? Well, I think there are several challenges. Uh, the first one is actually brand. So currently what we're seeing is a number of small farms or mm -hmm. business, but we haven't seen really a national champion. Right. right? So this is, uh, I think the industry is going to go into industry consolidation at some point uh, with a well-known brand name. Um, and um, the second challenge is actually distribution. So mm -hmm. one is, as we talked about, the service radius is quite limited. Uh, right. if you were to deliver fresh produce you know, to your clients. And also because these small farms in terms of production capability is quite limited. So it's mm -hmm. really difficult for them to uh, be able to sell their products through sort of national chain grocery store like Walmart or Carry4. And right. this is another challenge. Uh, a third challenge I can think of is actually market education. You know, mm -hmm. As we've seen from the video clip, the organic food is actually two or three times more expensive right. than the non-organic food. So as a consumer, when I go to the supermarket, I pick up a box of uh, organic vegetable. My first question is, is it really organic? Yeah, you can't right? tell the difference. As exactly. You know, I, can't, I can't really tell the difference. Mm -hmm. right? So I think there is an education uh, going on. You know, there is a learning curve. So we have to be able to convince consumers this is uh, indeed high quality. Uh, vegetable. Right? So going back to brand building, that's really important to build a reputation of being very honest and sincere with your customers. That's right. Uh, and also having industry trust. standard is also very important, mm -hmm. right? So I know that you know this organic vegetable has indeed been approved, you know, by the uh, government bureaus. Right. right. Even the definition of organic could be argued at some point. That's right. right. So we have to make sure that we have we we standardized the entire process. Yes, I think so. So a fourth challenge is actually scalability. So as we've seen from the video clip, uh, this company YMT only operates in the Shanghai area. So it owns a farm in Chongming mm -hmm. and uh, basically serves uh, the residents in Shanghai, right? So if the company is thinking about expanding geographically into other regions, then the question is, will the company be able to uh, consolidate a reasonable size of land for organic farming? I right? see. That's actually a big question mark. That's a giant challenge. Yeah. So Professor Jia, what are potential sources of revenues for this company? Well, I think the main source of revenue is still the sales from their uh, produce and vegetables. Mm -hmm. But I know some other farms actually in Shanghai, they're getting some government subsidies. So the government is ah. you know, putting in effort to uh, help foster the green economy in the vicinity here. So I know also some farms are trying to climb up the value chain by offering and producing sort of a higher margin products. Mm -hmm. For example, if they grow organic cucumbers, uh, they can try to make fresh organic cucumber juice or try ah. to make organic cucumber face mask, right? So which is actually a higher profitability, uh, higher profit margin uh, See, business products. branching out to different revenues. Exactly, sources, sources of revenues. Uh, and also uh, in Beijing, actually, some of my friends going to these farms on weekend. So basically, they're trying to combine these uh, you know, leisure and uh, tourist activities mm. with the farming activities. So the kids can go on a sort of very fun trip with her parents and going to these farms. It's like a retreat to, destination as exactly, well. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's another source of revenue. Uh, but what are the strategies for future development? So I agree, Tracy. I think uh, this industry sector definitely has high growth potential. Mm -hmm. However, uh, we cannot ignore the fact that this company has been around for the last eight years. Mm -hmm. And as of today, it's still operating in Shanghai and serving uh, the vicinity area. Right. So what this tells us is that this particular sector is not going to, or very unlikely to experience a explosive growth, you know, mm -hmm. like internet companies. Right. So you're unlikely to see a company in the agriculture sector that's able to accumulate thousands or millions of users overnight. Still rather regional as of now. That's right. So and also if you think about sort of agriculture in China, you know, we see a lot of small business owners, small mm -hmm. uh, business farms, right? But it's really hard to ex uh, expand into other regions. Mm -hmm. So I think what uh, YMT should do is just uh, for now try to stay in Shanghai and increase its exposure uh, in the local area, you know, mm. do more online advertisement, right. and also try to engage its existing users more. Right? So mm. basically in Japan, there is a very well-known model called CSA. Mm. So it's community 
uh, supported agriculture. Ah. So basically, every small community is able to support a small farm in the vicinity, right? And there is a high level interaction between the farm and uh, the vicinity users. So you concentrate right. on one part of market share. And That's really right, go deeper, exactly. That's right. Yeah. While the future of the e-farming industry seems bright, we'll look at how YMT raises money when we come back.